ladies, ladies and gents, I got a couple of things to talk about, but we're only going to talk about one thing. We're going to keep this video focused on the unlawful detainer. I told everybody that there were seven videos that they needed to pay attention to. And one of them was the unlawful detainer petition. This video was one hour, 39 minutes long. It involved a young man whom I was helping with his property. Okay. He was being put in a situation where they were foreclosing on him. So I put the actual document. Let's do this right here. I put the actual document online. And that's the that's the video we're going to now. I don't we're not gonna watch the video. It's an hour and 39 minutes long. What the Okay, we're not gonna watch this video. I just want you to be able to see the video, the see that it's up there. The document is online. The link, I believe, is underneath the video for this particular document. What you all are being asked to do is to understand what it does. And the law for detainer is the court trying to foreclose on you through summary judgment. They're saying that you ain't got no right to be there. Ladies and gentlemen, technically you don't have a defense in an unlawful detainer. That's why everybody gets kicked out of their house in an unlawful detainer. However, there are some challenges you can bring before the court. We put several challenges. Like I said, I always give you at least five different options. Five different options when you're going through foreclosure. Why? Because you can't just sit up there and let them take what you've worked hard for. I don't know. You need to understand. I don't care about materialism. As one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I know I'm going to lose my property. I know I'm going to lose everything. Uh, but remember, I've already told you, I've already started from zero seven times. Seven times. So I've already lost property, ladies and gentlemen. But this document was filed on the 28th. The court had already... Let me, let, me, let me tell you what the court did. This particular court had, there was supposed to be a hearing on the 13th of December. The hearing, the gentleman showed up at the hearing and the court hands him a letter saying, hey, what up, homie? Now -uh, we postponing this until the fall of next month. See ya. And so I went back into the court and I said, wait a minute, hold on, homies. Y'all, and you can read it in the document. That's why you have to edit it, because we actually use the actual document that we put in his case. I said, what up, homie? You can't do that. What, what do you mean calling me into court when you knew you were going to postpone this until January, having me come all the way down here to this court for nothing, wasting my time? That's the first thing. Okay? That's the first thing. Then we brought to the court's attention, wait a minute, these fools put in their motion that they put in a copy of the note and the deed of trust which is necessary it is necessary in doing a foreclosure however you, because you can't have a deed of trust without a note you can't have a note without a deed of trust there cannot be a foreclosure without the two items being together you have to be able to articulate that people so we told this to the court on the 28th but what he didn't know is that the court had put in its docket a order granting summary judgment now i told him i said the court was going to grant summary judgment that day without knowing this i told him they were going to grant you summary judgment go ahead and listen to the video because i say it they were going to grant him summary judgment but because that would have meant putting you out of your place during december 25th they have this policy where they postpone those type of hearings until after the beginning of the year that way the public doesn't look down on them as being grinches so I said, when the fourth comes, they're going to foreclose. So I need you to file chapter 13 bankruptcy for now. I said, that will postpone that hearing. And then you'll go through the motions with chapter 13 bankruptcy and make arrangements. And then we'll deal with the challenges. Then they'll have to reschedule this hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't an end all. But we labeled the motion, motion to dismiss. Why? Because these idiots came in there saying they had a right to take his property. I don't care what you purchased at some stupid garage sale. Just because you purchased it at a garage sale doesn't mean that what you purchased belonged to him. Ladies and gentlemen, I bought stolen property before. And that's what we're saying. They ain't got no right to sell this property. His issue isn't with us. It's with the person who he claimed he bought it from. That's who he got to go be talking to.
He ain't talking to me. He ain't going to do him no good. He's just speaking out the side of his neck. That's what we were saying. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he goes to court today. There was supposed to be a hearing today. Today is January 4th. He gets to court, and there is no court. Hmm. The case has been dismissed. What the? F How the case being dismissed? I thought they scheduled the hearing so they could do all that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the case is dismissed. The court dismissed the unlawful detainer without prejudice. They dismissed the unlawful detainer. Remember, we did this video and we showed you about the constitutional questions. Well, this includes those constitutional questions and several other unrebuttable questions. They cannot rebut this document. Impossible. Because we only put their truths in the document. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what's going to happen next. But that gentleman paid me $500 for a consult. I told him today, you received your $500 worth for your consult. Because I don't do templates, ladies and gentlemen. So in order to have my conscience right, I created this template for him. But I, in order to keep my policy of not doing templates for you guys, I put it out there for everybody. Everybody, not just him. For you all as well. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to amend this document to fit your situation. You have to take his information out where it talks about his court and everything. I tried to do that, but I didn't have the time because I don't do templates. So that template is there for your benefit. But his case, his unlawful detainer, he has shown me a copy of the court docket. He hasn't gotten a copy from the court itself, but he has shown me a copy of the court docket, which shows that dismissed by the court without prejudice, the unlawful detainer, Dismissed by the court. As a matter of fact, let me pull it up again because I just had it up. So let me pull up this docket again and let me go to that docket entry. Uh oh. I can't go to it that way because the way the document is on my computer, the way he sent it to me, it was to, uh, to what you call it? What do I say? Too small. So I can't enlarge it. Um, but the fact that it says dismissed by the court, and I do have it. He did send it to me in Word format, but it simply says dismissed by court without prejudice. Okay, so it says unlawful detainer. Now, it says AC. I don't know what AC stands for, so I can't tell you because it's a different court. But it says unlawful detainer, disposition, date of disposition, 12-13-2021, disposition dismissed by the court with prejudice, I mean without prejudice, excuse me. And then it says at disposition, it said the attorney for them. Then it says name of plaintiff and defendant. And, but the problem is, he didn't put, yeah, parties and attorneys, and then name changes for plaintiff and defendant. So apparently they're changing people's names. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know fully everything because this is not normal. This is not how things go normally. But I will, can, I will tell you and confirm that the case has been dismissed. Will that happen with you? Sorry, my desk, my desk that moves up and down was moving up and down. Will that happen for you? Will that be the outcome for you? I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I just know that they've never rebutted any of my documents. They've said things like uh, nonsensical, but they don't say what the nonsense is. They'll say frivolous, but they don't say what the frivolousness is. They'll say meritless, but they don't say what the meritlessness is. They don't give specifics. They just speak in generalities. I just looked at a couple of cases that had my name on it where the courts are supposedly ruling against me, and they're not ruling against me. It, it, you, when you read it, you'll see they're not ruling against me. They're just dismissing it. 
they're not ruling against me. They're just dismissing it. Like uh, SATCOM versus PayPal. Nobody's paying attention. I filed that arbitration with my name and SATCOM's name on it. I'm the one who was filing and petitioning the court. But the court ignored me and focused on SATCOM only. Okay, fine. Focus on SATCOM. But I filed the petition. So the court did not mention anything about invalidating my arbitration award, my portion of the award, just SATCOM's portion. So thank you, court, for documenting that nobody contested my $30 million award. Appreciate it. No? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I like I said, I can't tell you that it'll work with you, but I can tell you that this unlawful detainer video that was put up on uh, December 28th appears to have worked. Like I said, I can't tell you that it'll work for you, but I can tell you that it ain't gonna hurt you to try. Stop putting in all that other junk. Like I said, you can't mix what I do with what everybody else does. That's why I had to word it the way I worded it because this gentleman had put in some other paperwork that literally was contradicting itself and that didn't make any sense. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I only deal with one thing and that's facts. I don't deal with presumptions. A lot of you are operating on presumptions. Well, they're doing this and they're doing that, but you don't have any proof. You're just saying what they're doing. You're doing the same thing they do. That's right. You can't be like them. You ain't gotta sit up here and try to be like me to kick it. Okay? You ain't got a lie to kick it, people. So stop trying to be like them. Just really got to understand that. Stop trying to be like them. Just state what the facts are. And if they challenge you, then challenge them back. You see how I put in the thing about the SEC. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the SEC T1 license and see whether or not that trustee is selling your property and if he's registered with the SEC, he's violating the SEC and you can file a complaint with the SEC, they will correct the idiot. The SEC is not supporting foreclosures, ladies and gentlemen. The SEC is not showing up in court supporting foreclosures. So call SEC employees who specialize in T1s, who specialize in mortgage-backed securities and have them get on the stand and explain how a trustee cannot get involved in the foreclosing of properties, that he can only be involved in securities. Go ahead. That's why you usually have what's known as a securitization trustee, but he's the only trustee that is authorized to do anything. He can't authorize another trustee to do something. He ain't got that type of authority. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I believe the document, I can't tell you the document, doesn't have any loopholes in it for where they can find a loophole, but for right now, they ain't going to be finding nothing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got to go. I don't want to do 15 minutes, so we had 13 minutes. Thank you for letting me bring this to your attention. I got to go take a shower. It's been a long day. Ah. <sighs> Oh, Lord, I had to wait for it to get warmer. I mean, I got my propane and everything, but that propane was expensive, homie. That propane was $5.30 a gallon. That's how they got over on me, okay? But it's all right. I, I had no choice because I needed the propane. I couldn't afford to drive around to find out who was open and who wasn't open. So I had no choice. And that's, you guys are going to find that companies are going to do this to you now especially when we do the other lockdowns. Hey guys, gotta go, take care, okay?